Christina Campbell reporting from Microbiome Times, and we are very happy to be here today with Aoife Brennan, who is the CEO of Synlogic. So thank you for being with us today. My pleasure, Christina. So my first question for you is, what are synthetic biotic medicines, and what advantages might they have over traditional medicines? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, at Synlogic, we um, are pioneering the development of a new class of medicines that we've called synthetic biotic medicines. And um, these are, are therapies that are at the forefront of two areas of science. Number one, synthetic biology, which is based on our ability to um, weed and crimp DNA. And then the biotic component, which is based around alive bacteria. So what we do essentially to generate our synthetic biotic medicines is we take a strain of probiotic bacteria and we engineer it with specific functionality that may be missing or defective in a disease state. So we engineer probiotics to perform a specific function within the human body to complement for deficiencies that may be there due to disease. To answer your second question, it really starts with understanding the biology and the mechanism. And once you understand the mechanism, we think that engineering a single bacterial strain to perform that specific mechanism is very advantageous from a drug development perspective because we can test whether it's performing that mechanism preclinically. We can move into early clinical development and then evaluate the function of the bacteria within the human GI tract and then subsequently move into trials in patients with disease. Um, so that's kind of the philosophy of mm -hmm. what we do with the company and, and some of the advantages. And so if these are beneficial bacteria or probiotics, um, why engineer them? You know, there are many therapies that are just about probiotics. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. We started with a strain of bacteria that's been very well studied as a probiotic called E. coli nissel. It's available here in Europe um, under the brand name Mutaflor. Um, and that probiotic has been around. We know a lot about the safety. Um, of it, but there are certain diseases which require activity that's not endogenous or that the, the, that bacteria does not perform naturally. Mm -hmm. And without applying synthetic biology or genetic engineering, it would not be associated with the benefit that we're specifically designing for. I'll give you an example. Um, one of our programs is developing um, a product to treat patients with PKU, phenylketonuria, now we know that patients with PKU have very high fee levels. That comes from diet. There's a lot of fee that circulates through the gut. So engineering a bacteria that consumes fee within the gut could be beneficial for those patients. Um, that's not something that E. coli nissel does by itself. Mm -hmm. So we need to engineer a specific synthetic circuit into E. coli nissel under the control of a specific promoter in order for the uh, bacteria to be beneficial in patients with PKU. You mentioned PKU. What has informed your choice of all the disease indications you're targeting? So we see that we have very broad potential as a platform, but have decided to focus initially on two different areas of biology. One being metabolic diseases and the second area is immunomodulation. And in the metabolic disease space, we chose indications where the biology was well understood, where we understood the mechanism that we needed to engineer into the bacteria, and where we would have good biomarkers to guide us in terms of the development of, of the product. Mm -hmm. And those programs have taught us a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we're still learning. Just this year, we've progressed into disease um, treatment of patients in early phase studies where we learn a lot about our activity and mechanism in those patients. Um, and I think the choice of relatively straightforward metabolic disease while we're learning the rules of the platform is going to really help us in, in the long term and that's a core part of our strategy. So finally, what do you see as the broad landscape of therapeutic um, manipulation via, of the microbiota for disease treatment? Yeah, I think there's huge potential. Um, you know, the, if you look at the number of um, studies that are coming out in the literature, initially identifying associations between the microbiome and disease states, and now really starting to get to mechanisms, um, and that, you know, that mm -hmm. landscape is really broad. Mm -hmm. I think the real question is, what's the underlying mechanism? How do we develop specific products to address that mechanism? 
And then which of the really exciting platform companies are going to advance and be able to address that, that underlying mechanism? But I think mm -hmm. you know, the span is, is really broad from neurological disease to inflammation and immunology to metabolic diseases. Um, I think there's huge potential in, in the area and um, it's a really exciting time to be in, in this uh, component of drug development. Mm -hmm. That's a great summary. Thank you. And thank you for being with us today. My pleasure.